the house, Julian Placido and Fossil Green. Good job, guys. Here's Search at City Works. Careers Search City Works. Come on, man. Y'all make it. <laughs> Jake Melton in the house. Tell us, Austin, what's it about? Who? Yeah, no. Okay. Welcome to the Who You Know Who Job Networking you Show. Know. Well, what you know is important. But you know what? But who y'all know? Yeah, who that's you know. That, yeah, that's it. Who you know? Who you know? We know. are here today yes. at Who You Know Studios. We got a brand new studio today. Yes. yes. Wow. And yes. I don't know what the video, what the uh, volume is on you guys in, or what the what you know what, how things are reverberating yeah, in here. But I hope you can hear us just fine. Let us know, you guys. Check in. Let us know. Absolutely. Let us know how everything comes because I am actually, uh, you know, producing this thing today. I've got my switcher oh. here. Oh. So I've got multiple camera views. How cool is that? We'll say hi to camera number one. Hello. How are hey, you doing camera today? Camera number one. Hello to Excuse camera me. number two. Hi, how's it going? And we got Mark's little bobblehead in the house. You guys this like is that? Mark, you guys. This guy right here, that's him. <laughs> when you get big time, crazy. you get a bobblehead. <laughs> Watch out, he's crazy. So, hey uh, guys, we got a great show for you guys today. We have information that a lot of you uh, have never heard before. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we're real excited about that. But as always, we need to start it off right. Yes, let's start, start this off? prayer, uh, start the show with a prayer. Foster, will That's you right. do us the honors? Okay, I'll do it. Hey, you guys, you guys looking and you guys listening, bow your heads with us. Father God, we thank you for another day. Now, we're in the job search. We want the right kind of job. We don't know what that is. You do. So we're turning to you and we're asking for you to guide us as though you have, I mean, you've done it our whole lives. And we ask that you continue and teach us to put a little bit more faith in and focus on you so we'll understand a little bit more about what you're doing. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Focus it, on faith. Focus yes. on faith. Right? Isn't that a show? I think that's a you show. Know, it probably is. Well, let's talk. It might be the other Chuck CSN. Swindoll's. Pastor Swindoll's. Pastor Swindoll's. Let, let's yeah, say hello. Like let's him. say hello real quick. We've got a great audience with us. Jill Johnson, how are you <laughs> doing? Jill yeah. Hey, hey Jill. Jill, and congratulations again to you. Ernie Vanderlee. Yeah, Terry. I talked with Ernie today. Ernie, Ernie, Ernie I oh, got you. you. Yeah, I talked to him today. Nice, uh, Tammy, how are you doing? Tim, what's hey, going Tim, on, Tim? Hey, Tim, I just saw you. Uh, Gene, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Of course, Hope. Everybody's got to have a little and hope. hey, Michelle Barrett. I hey, Michelle. Saw, hey, Michelle. Oh, and Frank. Hey, Frank. Frank. If you're tuning in right now, go ahead and uh, let us know that you're checked in with us. Uh, we've got a great show for you today. Yeah. We're going to be talking about this man right here, Mr. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Mr. Foster, uh -oh. Uh -oh. I miss. I'm missing we're an image. Talk about the very reason that we have this radio show. Yep, it's not me. It's about the job search again. Yeah. Well, we want to know about your journey, right? Because you've been doing this for a long time, Foster. Mm -hmm. This is a ministry for you. I know mm -hmm. it's in your heart. So I want to hear about how you started. How did this journey start for you? Well, you know what, Jim Munson. I hope you're listening. I know you're working, brother. But uh, Jim and Jim invited me to come out to Irving Bible Church uh, in 1996, and there were a number of people. The market was doing, I, yeah, yeah, it was doing better than what it does right now. And, and I mean, our market here in Dallas Fort Worth is pretty dynamic. You guys know that. But Jim Munson and I started a group, and it got popular. And then the next thing you know, one group started another one group, started another group. So we decided that in 2006 that we would uh, organize this thing. So we became the Career Search Network, and uh, man, did it blow up. Yeah. You know, God has blessed us with things like what you guys have added to the network. Uh, we've got, man, we've got all sorts of job open houses we've got career expos you guys know something about that yeah so what kind of kind of like the uh career search career at city works, search career at city search works. At omni Absolutely. 
So the the the, the 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 bottom line to this whole thing is, guys, we get together and we develop relationships, and then we reach out to people that we know. And a lot of times, now with so many people in the in the um, in the network, you, it's hard to find a company that doesn't have already a number of people from the Career Search Network that already work there, and they can help us because if there's a job opening at that company. Uh, if we reach out to these people, they were a part of what we are. So we're kind of a family. We just kind of take care of each other like that. Well, I know, Foster, you've got a lot of experience, great experience as a recruiter, right, in oh, the yeah. industry. And so you were a recruiter years. for a long time. How, yeah. how many years? Oh, my God. A couple? Let me think. I started recruiting for IBM in 84. 84? Mm. <laughs> 84. I don't Good look year. my age, do I, you guys? <laughs> don't answer that. <laughs> There's a couple little, little grades up there. Little, I cut them off little. so you guys wouldn't have to see so many. So it started in 84, and you've been with some big companies. Yeah. Um, can you can you kind of give us an idea of, you know, you don't have to list off, rattle off your resume, but... You know, you've got some good, yeah. good big companies that you worked with. Who are IBM, those? Citigroup, of course, Verizon. Had a, had a little over a year stint with Corn Ferry. A number of you guys uh, have heard about and have worked with Corn Ferry on the executive end, on the pretty, pretty high level executive end. So I had some wonderful experiences at Corn Ferry. Uh, those are the main companies in my uh, in my career that I like to talk about. Now, you had also done, one of the things that I remember you talking about is NASA. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You've done some, a couple you did of contracts for, yeah, a couple of contracts for NASA. Wow. Down in Florida on the coast where it was fun. I wish the contracts would have lasted longer, but, you know, I'm still on the vendors list. So, Dr. <laughs> Afrin, you can call me anytime you get ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just noticed your shirt in my pocket square, man. Oh, you got... You got, got an orange pocket square. So there. you guys know what week this is right here in Texas? What is it? This. The cotton ball. Right? Oh. It's all about this. Hey. Hey, look at that. Look. Look at that. Almost. Almost. Hey. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty close. A little yeah. more burnt, right? Uh, yeah. We have fun. Oklahoma Sooners, we love you guys. Now, I'll probably get shot for saying that, but <laughs> I, I keep it on the real. Now, the game is on Saturday? The game's on Saturday, Saturday. at 11 o'clock. Oh, man. We 11 were... o'clock at the Cotton Bowl. Uni wanted to go to the fair, take the boys to the fair this Saturday. Oh man, I and bet it was. I bet it was crazy. I don't know if we should go. We maybe we may have to revise that plan. Well, you might have to work on that. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, let's let's talk about some landings. I know we've got some in the yeah, house, right? Yeah, yeah. You guys absolutely. were we're talking about who who are some of the Mark rattled off three a while ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're on on LinkedIn. Tacy, oh Ferraro. yeah, Tacy, yep. Congratulations, yeah. guys! Let's give a round of applause. Right. Round of applause. Let's give some hands on LinkedIn for for Tacy. Congratulations, mm-hmm. congratulations. Yeah. congratulations. I like oh, Tacy's name. Oh, Ferraro. oh, I got cool. a big one. I got a big one. Ooh. Okay, so this oh, was yeah. Friday. I got I got word Friday. Everybody give a round of applause for David Ferner. Yeah, oh, David, David Ferner. Landed. David Ferner. Landed. That's yeah. right. Yes, David Ferner yeah, he's landed. He's got a story. Yeah, his story, story. By the way, we're gonna uh, have him Foster. On. Um, big big part of that was you. Uh oh, what did I do? Well, you uh, you got him a connection. Uh-huh. That ended up referring to another connection. It yeah, was a, that's you, networking. You passed to a, uh, to a recruiter. The recruiter passed to the hiring manager, mm-hmm. and then he used um, bomb bomb hashtag bomb bomb, and they were so impressed by it. Um, he was in England when all the interviews were happening and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, our uh, network is not just the United States, guys. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, no, they were. I mean, the company's here in the United the States. He was on vacation. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. he was visiting his family in in England. Good. And yeah, uh, David, yeah. yeah. And and so he wanted to make sure when he told them, "Hey, I'm I'm out of the country," uh-huh. that they actually you know like believed him. So he when he used the bomb bomb to like show the evidence that he wasn't. Oh, he's really in England. And uh, <laughs> for real, for real, yeah. And so, uh, but anyways, they loved it. They, uh, he said, he sent many videos into the company, and they all were like asking about him and asking about the videos. And the, he said the hiring manager sought him out specifically because of the videos. Uh-huh. And sure enough, boom, he landed. And so, guys, big round of applause! Oh, big round of applause! Big round of applause! Round of applause. Yeah. Round of applause. Yeah, bomb, bomb, David, congratulations! Yep, bomb, bomb does it again. And yeah. this man right here—it wouldn't have happened. I mean, he wanted to make sure that was very clear 
that you understood that oh, it was wow. it was you too, Foster. So. Thank you, David. Thank you. I am a servant of God. It was God that did it. He just used my big mouth, maybe. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the video technology guys, consider it. It's a new idea. It's not a new idea. It's been around a while, but the application of what we do with that video, guys, uh, is a new idea in job search. Yep. Uh, we do it for a number of other things. When you go to LinkedIn, you guess what? I'm looking at a lot of people on LinkedIn right now. When you're on LinkedIn, what do you see? Video. You've seen a video of us right now. Yep. You see other people sharing what they know on video. So, guess what? In about two years, probably everything that we're going to be doing is going to be around some sort of video. Mm -hmm. re re uh, resumes will still be alive, but they probably will be added into things. You know. Well, I was addition. I was reading an article that uh, actually a, a job seeker mm -hmm. had shared with me about uh, AI, right, and the artificial intelligence. And basically it was talking about um, robot interviews. So oh, basically yeah. what's happening is you're going to, you know, they're going to do video interviews, they're going to ask you questions, and then the artificial intelligence is going to look at your tone, your facial expressions. It's going to read, like, if you're lying or, you know, <laughs> misleading. No. You know, it's reading uh, if you have, if you're excited or if you're scared. It's it's getting all these analytics on your face and how you deliver. and. Yeah. Next thing you know, Skynet's going to launch all them nukes, and we're going to be fighting Terminators. <laughs> Speaking of There's Terminator, a new Terminator yep. movie coming. Uh, <laughs> I've been mean, okay. thinking about that Guys. because they just they just made the announcement. So yeah. I watched this on uh, the news last night. Uber, yeah, their self driving cars. They've got five yeah. of them coming to Dallas. There's downtown. one Did, running around yeah. Hall Park right now. Right, yeah. is that a yeah. van? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. Yeah. self driving. Yep. Did you guys catch what just happened? Me and Foster. Did you see it? I immediately went to him. No, no, he went to pound it, and it was went like no, no, no. No, I'm, I went. Yeah. We, now that's got to be some new thing, right? That's a uh, martial arts. Yeah, that was okay. my deal because he, I, uh, you know Trevor started it first, <laughs> and I was supposed to follow suit. But yeah. you know me, I can't. I'm too old. I can't follow. It's all good. Can't then, follow directions. And then you got Mark's bobblehead here. Mark's, Mark's bobblehead, bobblehead. with yeah. the thumbs up. So. Yeah. Uh, give us a thumbs up on LinkedIn. Give us yeah, a thumbs up. I don't on think they had, <laughs> they didn't have like an Asian bobblehead, I well, guess. Well, it kind of looks mm -hmm. Asian. <laughs> That'll work. So, guys, so we're, we're a little bit crazy. We're just, we're just having fun, guys. So what are some uh, events that are coming up? Do you guys know of any that are, well, I know there's a Grapevine Job Fair, which is October yeah, 14th, I want to say. October 14th. Um, I did talk to Dr. Dumas, uh, oh, yeah, Orlando. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he had to pass along the news that his event this Saturday is going to have to be rescheduled. Oh, okay. So we had promoted oh. that on previous shows, mm -hmm. and so I just want to make sure that our listener audience is well aware that um, if you were planning on going to that, that is not actually going to happen this Saturday. It's going to be a different day. Um, so okay. Later this year. Okay. Well, we'll get the information year. out if uh, once it gets rescheduled yep. and all that good stuff, we'll get it out there to now, you. As always, next Tuesday coming up, is, or this coming Tuesday is Frisco, Frisco Connect. Connect. Frisco Connect, Connect yep. baby. That's oh, what right. I was talking about. Yeah. There's the workshop uh, next Monday. There's, I mean. Oh, and guys, do not forget about Thursday. the pit crew every Wednesday. Pit crew's going well, you, on. Or pit crew's be, going on right now while we're here. Just getting done. Yep. So, Foster, what is the pit crew? Yeah. It stands for practice interview training, guys. So, if you got an email, if you got an email, I'm sorry. If you've got an interview coming up, maybe you want to practice a little bit. Maybe you want to hone in where you're not feeling so nervous about your interview. Yep. And we have a team of professionals led by Mark McDonald. Mm -hmm. uh, every Wednesday, one o'clock every Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, Christ United, Christ Methodist, United Church. Methodist Church. Uh, guys, link in with Mark McDonald. Make sure to do that. Uh, the information for the pit crew and all the stuff about pit crew will be there on his information. You guys need to know about that. It is a component of our network. What the network is here to do. If you just got laid off, you don't know what to do. You yeah, might where do you start for your company for thirty years? You don't know what to do, but you know there's something that you can become a part of. It's very extensive. It's easily the largest around here. It's the largest in the United States, one more I keep hearing. Uh, and we are encouraging places like Minnesota and places like Durham, North Carolina that have a multiplicity of groups to do some of the same thing. Guys, I am on contract 
to travel to you guys and show you how to do it. So hey, hey awesome. so the, Very the good. grapevine hope uh, hope had commented the grapevine job fair is the twelfth this Saturday. Is the twelfth this Saturday the twelfth? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, you guys need to check that out because last time we went to grapevine job fair, it was it was a big deal, very big. Yeah, deal. it so, is a big deal. I so like guys, it because local companies, the grapevine are there. Yeah. They're populated with local companies from Grapevine. If you live in Grapevine, South Lake, West Lake, you know, or around the Alliance area, mm-hmm. that probably, geographically, wouldn't you be interested in uh, maybe finding well, a job and close I, to the house? And I want to talk about that for a second because yeah. last time we did this and I remember, you know, I heard a lot of comments from some of the job seekers were saying, well, they weren't looking for those uh, higher level positions. Okay. They're looking for the lower level positions. And I said, okay, well... I understand that, but here's the thing. If you can go to a job fair like this, make connections, and find the people who are in charge, right? That recruiter might be trying to immediately fill a lower-level position. But they got. But. Yes. It's all about who you know, right? It's so all make, about networking. That's what yes. we're a network. That's what we're here for you. Guys. Yeah, you got to network to, to get to that next level, and it may not be that recruiter that's in charge of that. Mm-hmm. It may be he. He may have to send you to the next person, but somebody always knows somebody. But knows. all those companies that are there, and they had a bunch of companies oh, over there. Yeah. They're all hiring corporate level positions, higher level and positions. And there's some large companies there, guys. Yep, yep. So I, I would highly recommend just because when you walk in the door, they're trying to sell you like you know the lower level stuff. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Hey, some of you need a gap job right now. I'm going to tell you that right now. Some of you listening to this show, you need a gap job. You need something in between when you find that next level position, but you need a gap job just to get some income in. Uh, I've seen way Sometimes too many people go. Like that, yeah. uh, we had one gentleman that was 28 months in the search. Yeah. You know what that does to you? Yeah, I know. Not yeah. only inside, but the rest of your world starts to crumble too. Your bank yeah. account and the rest of it, I'm right? I'm glad you said that. Here's what I want to say. Guys, listen to me real good. I've been doing this for 37 years now. A number of companies, especially the larger companies, some of these companies that I work for, make decisions. Certain people make decisions that involve probably a, a whole section of the company, maybe a certain certain department or something, and you get laid off. It's not because you're not doing your job up to snuff. It's just business. Yep. I don't agree with it. Yep. I wouldn't do my company that way. I never will. But... You guys cannot, cannot, cannot. Did I say cannot? Cannot. You guys should not, cannot, do not take that personally. Right. You I mean, even still know how to do. To you, yeah. You still know how to do what but, you what you do, but go out and tell people I'm a project manager. I'm a this. I'm a that. I'm a CEO. I'm you know whatever. You're still that. Just because this company laid you off does not make sure. It does not make and you, you know anything what? different. I think people wrap up their identity. Yeah. In, in a in a logo. We've been taught to right? do that. Yeah. They, they wrapped our identity in a company and in a logo. And if you were spent 25 years with a company, I can, I can get it. I understand it. Yeah, but you are so much more valuable than mm-hmm. that. You are more than a logo. You're more than whatever company you worked for. You have talents. You have gifts. And God put those in there for a reason. You and you know be. what? Sometimes I can tell you that God will make things uncomfortable for you. And maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe so you, that you you take a leap of faith. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's a it, it's, you know, I, I heard this uh, from Mel. I think it's Mel Robbins. She's uh-huh. a big influencer. Mel Robbins. She had said a job is a lot like dating. We we make that reference all the time. It but is. she she tied it, it into is. a different a different perspective. She said that. You know, when you date somebody, sometimes you, you you outgrow each other, right? Sometimes you outgrow a relationship, and it's not the right fit. And it may have been a right fit in the beginning, but then sure. they yeah. either either they weren't giving their all or you weren't giving your all, one or the other, yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe both, right? Maybe both. And so yeah. what happens is you grow apart. And the same thing is with the company. And you have to really reflect on that. Either the company wasn't giving you what you needed, or you weren't giving the company what they needed. Or maybe both. But you got to reflect on that. Sometimes the company comes and buys your company. You know what? They like to bring their own people with them. Yep. And, and they just get, switch it all up. Yeah. <laughs> very, very true. Very, yeah. very true. Yeah. One more thing. I want you guys to know what this cross-section of this career search network is that we're talking about. We have two different kind of groups, guys. We have general networking groups 
where everybody didn't do the same thing. You are going to see, since we cover the whole Metroplex, you're going to see, uh, like Monday mornings, there is the Fort Worth Career Search Network that for- focuses on things in Fort Worth and Alliance and the western side of the Metroplex, and you're going to see South Lake Focus Group. That is huge, and it focuses on the entire network. And then you're going to see Frisco Connect, who focuses on more of the Dallas side of the Metroplex. And there will be people from all backgrounds there that you will be able to you'll be able to to recruit uh, recruit yeah sometimes recruit because we comp- we want you companies to come out to the group so you can find the very job seekers that have been displaced and you know what they do not have to give a two weeks notice you won't have to wait for to, to get them in a seat at your company number two we have special interest groups it's a fine tune if you're in IT you need to be talking to IT people you guys understand each other if you're an engineer, especially engineers, we have finance and accounting. We have project management. Dennis O'Hagan over in, in, in Plano yeah. runs a, a sales and business development group. You guys really, really need to plug in with Dennis on Tuesday How's morning. How's Dennis doing? He's doing a lot. He's doing fine. He's doing fine. He's still pushing pushing ahead. With is, there, is there a group like Duncanville, Grand Prairie, Mansfield, somewhere that is... South Metro, South Metro. Used to be, you know what happened? Everybody got a job. So, (laughs) (laughs) well, that's a good thing. Yeah, they did. The leaders especially got a job. We are a volunteer organization. Most, not all, but most of the people in our organization are looking for a job. They are job seekers, so they're going through. And what they speak of and what they lead groups on, they understand because they're going through it too. Speaking of getting landed and, and, you know, other people, thinking about other people, uh, want to make sure that we point out before we get too far in, there's that little arrow right oh, down yeah. at the bottom of your screen. Hit the share yeah. button. Go ahead and click that share button and share it. Yeah, I think it's down there somewhere. Like, yeah, is it down there? It's over. Somewhere over there. Yeah, right somewhere. down there. Hit the yeah. share button because sharing <laughs> is caring. Ernie um, Vandalis, I owe you a call, man. And so, and the other thing that I want to mention, too, is for those of you that are listening on LinkedIn, hello, LinkedIn Live. For those of you All that are on the world. Facebook and YouTube, wherever you're watching, make sure that you comment. Make sure that you guys are involved and engaged. Speaking here. of comments, oh, let's yeah. let's Come go on. ahead and take a quick break. Let's go to our audience real quick. Yeah. And guys, let's what we would like for you to do, what we'd like for you to do, is go ahead and put a hashtag next. Uh, put a hashtag and then what you do. So hashtag it. Yep, Ernie's already ahead. He said hashtag security management. There you go. Hashtag it's good for and Ernie. what you do. Um, Hashtag project management, QA, accounting and finance. We have a big audience of recruiters that watch this show, and so they need to know what it is that you're looking for so that they can go look at your information and go look at your LinkedIn profile. So go ahead and do that. Um, I also want to talk about um, this book right here. So, Oh, yeah. You know, With all the technology and the implementation of all this stuff, that is mm-hmm. what we need to do in the job search right now. So this book is called Rehumanize Your Business, okay? And I want you to think about what your job is when you're when you're searching. Your job is to uh, communicate with businesses. And this is the number one book on Amazon right now for business communications. Um, and that's your job. Your job is to communicate with business. And what you want to do is you want to rehumanize it because right now, they're getting all that AI involved. They're getting mm-hmm. all this, uh, the, the ATS and all that What's kind of stuff. What's AI? Artificial intelligence. Artificial, artificial guys. So forget that. We need Made to. Up. Oh, yep. It's Made not up real people. So you need to. Um, I would encourage you if you are right now uh, subscribed to the Bomb Bomb platform. If you're using it, I would encourage you to pick up this book because this book also gives you. Like tips and tricks and different things that you can, how to use it, right? How and best it. practices and, and what makes sense. Um, so I would highly encourage that you do that. All right, let's see who we got here online with us. Christopher Smith, how are you doing? Uh, hashtag Senior Operations Management. Senior Operations Management. You recruiters that are listening to the show, if you are looking for anything in ops leadership, go check out Chris. Link in with him. Check, yeah. him out. check out his profile. Got Meg Rose, Engineering Management. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Meg Rose, real quick. Um, I heard from a good friend of ours, uh, Rob Free. I'm sure you yeah. know him. He said that he bumped into you at his company uh, that you were interviewing there, and uh, he's already 
you know, passed along your information. Oh, yeah. So, oh, nice. uh, yeah, he, he sent me a message and said, you know, yeah, here, here's a who you know story. So Meg Rose, uh, hopefully he can, you know, push it a little to the next step. And yeah. he will. Rob believes in what we do. Some people yep. get the spirit of what we're doing, and you guys are exemplary. We've There's got, my word for today. We've got Adriana El- Ed- Eldred. Hey, Human Adriana, Resources how are Adriana. you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Yeah. Yeah. Benefits Joelle Administrator. Fry. Joelle yeah. is a integral part of this network and she really really helps i want yes. to thank you joel yes thank you joel we also have jesh uh batra hey how are you hey jesh and joel, uh, did, did joel land yeah joel landed yeah right yeah okay. she's it amazing was maybe what a month or maybe About two month months ago. ago straighten us out joel tell us what we're yeah we're stumbling over <laughs> here you are welcome chris he says thanks for the shout out yep. meg rose says xoxo you go give some love meg rose to uh, yeah. rob free yes. we got china haley real estate property administration project and our buddy bert lamb is there egbert lamb Oh, Michelle, hey, how are you? Michelle Barrett. Michelle yeah, Barrett. Instructional design and training. Now, let me tell you, company, something real quick. Michelle Barrett is the best in instructional design training that you are going to find. And she has a fine understanding of the IT world. So if there's some things that you guys need to push out to your leadership, Michelle Barrett, B-A-R-R-E-T-T. Give her two T's. Don't steal don't steal a T. <laughs> give her all of her T's. Oh man! So guys, we uh, we absolutely love you, and we hope that uh, you get landed soon. It's not always our time, but his time, right? And there's a plan for all of this stuff. We're all going through a journey together. It is planned um, out. I want you to know that that uh, Mark and, and Foster and myself, uh, you know, we're we're here with you. Okay, we yep. ride. Th- we we go through this with you guys, especially me. You know, y'all hear from me too much. You to get tired of hearing my voice. Well. Welcome back to the Who You Know Job Networking Show, where what you know is important, but, but who, who you know can make all now, the difference. Now, we all know in 50 states in the union, it's about who you know, right? Yep. It's all about who you right? know. Right. Hey, um, we're, we are back. We don't have a separate guest today, but we have a very special guest. The guest. The oh, guest. Man. The job father. The we are job hearing father. Him in here. Foster's story. And so one of the things that I know... Uh, you have dealt with Foster, your your experience in the recruiting industry, but you had you had um, a life event yeah. that happened, right? Yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit about that and Absolutely. tell us about your story there? After we had become, I was hired by GTE to help them become Verizon. Uh, I was leading, I was one of the talent acquisition leaders there, and I did a lot of stuff. Well, November 28th, 2001, I had a massive brain aneurysm, 60% of my brain, they said was disappearing. All right, we had a black in the, oh, all the pictures they took of my head. It was it was a big old black hole in there. Oh my gosh! And because of the, yeah, the blood, the blood and all that stuff. Man. And they thought it was de- dead tissue. And I don't know, maybe it was. You got to have a brain to short out, right? How old were you? <laughs> so, then, you know, oh man, how old was I? Let me see. Thirty-seven, I think. Wow, that mm. is so young. Man, yeah, man, that's so scary. No, I'm lying. I was forty. I'm lying. Hey, I was, <laughs> I was 40. They, they, I'm not a math dude. Come on now. Foster so, was lying, and on that note, hold on. The views expressed in this program <laughs> are those of the facilitators and, and are for informational informational purposes only. No products are being marketed, nor is any advice being provided <laughs> in this program. Program <laughs> attendees should seek their own tax accounting and or legal advice. Good call. Good call. <laughs> Tax accounting, guys. Job search. Hey, we got you. So you're laying there, right? Yeah. Heads all just blowed up. Uh huh. And what are you? What's going through your 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 mind at that point in time? And I could, you know, just Besides surviving. Yeah. I knew that my corporate career was over, which I, that didn't hurt my mm. feelings, honestly. My dad was a pastor, so I I was raised a little different. I act a little different. You guys know that. If you've met me, you're like, either that guy's pretty cool or that dude's weird. He's from <laughs> Mars or somewhere. But uh, I was not, uh, I knew my whole life was going to be different. I didn't know what it was going to be. And I actually got excited about what was going to be next. Now, you had been, they they had, I've heard you say in the past, you were clinically dead. They pr- pronounced me clinically dead. And you guys, if you Man. think I'm lying, you can call Plano Presbyterian Hospital and ask them what happened. On November 28, 2001, with Foster Williams. If they'll tell you, you know, everybody's so tight about information these days. That's so true. Late, late 30s, I can show you papers. early 40s, you're, you know, near the grave. 
And yeah, I you, pretty much was. Yeah. You come back, you're with us. And so tell us a little bit more like, so you knew you, that you weren't going back to work. How long was the recovery, by the way? I mean, well, I, what, what happened there? Corn Ferry hired me in 05. Uh, okay. They wanted to put me on contract to uh, to service some of their clients that they had. Okay. Uh, in my leadership ability and stuff in the past, guys, I was told that I, I was going to have to start over. That did not happen. Mm-hmm. Did I not didn't happen. forget. Okay, I didn't forget. You guys know I don't forget nothing. I'm like an elephant. So was it like they they everything was fixed and you just bounced right back and the next slowly, couple weeks or slowly, was it slowly I was it was it, I'm actually you guys can't tell but I'm still recovering it's a forever recovery it's a forever things recovery. are not the same the balance is not the same I had to learn to walk all over again okay. you know uh, I had a massive massive brain aneurysm and. Uh, uh, there were a number of things they thought I was not I was not going to speak. They speak. thought I wasn't going to even remember who my mom was and all that stuff. And you know what? Wow. When you have a country mom, you gonna remember her. <laughs> well, look, I know you know things like That's that. Awesome. I mean, they're so scary, but you know we learn a lot from them. Yeah, and we obviously do. Obviously, you have, and you know you've already you know, kind of shared some of your takeaways. But you know, the reason you're here, I'm sure there were just. A ton of people praying for you. So were you a believer at the time? Absolutely, I was. Yeah, my dad was pastor. Thank you. Oh, that's right. And guys, I'm going to tell you something that you'll find hard to believe. That aneurysm, as painful as it was, that was the absolute best thing that ever happened to me in my whole life. Not there's nothing even been close. Why is that? It changed my life, and it put me in focus on what God had for me. I had no choice. God orchestrated my life to where I had no choice but to trust Him and His Word and what He said. Everything went away, and it got frustrating for a long time. Believe me, it did. Well, I will. I will tell you. I mean, like I said, you know, you don't come back from something like that without a bunch of prayer. So yeah, yeah and he's got a reason that he has you around, and yeah. Yep. Well, we got a lot of comments pouring in, a lot of love oh, for man. you, Foster. So Meg Rose says, thank you for sharing your story. Meg Jill Rose. Johnson says, grateful for your gifts, Foster. You are talented, man. You Thank got you, gifts. Jill. Joel <laughs> says amen to that. Uh, Michelle Jesus says, I wasn't going to say anything, but I thought you were 40. <laughs> Good. You know I act like it don't. No, I don't. I act like I'm probably 15. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are super happy that you are with us, right? So um, you went back to Corn Ferry then. Right, yeah. and so they they took a chance. Yeah, they really did. They yeah. took a chance on you. Okay? In their so, estimation, they did. Yeah, I live in a little bit different world, but in their estimation, they did. Is take that a is that um, is that something that you know they said, hey, we're going to take a chance on you, or we're going? I mean, what what happened? They said, hey, we know that you're. Did they do you a favor? I mean, they well, they didn't know that it was intense as it was. They heard okay. about it. And, of course, I knew that they would freak out if I told them the truth or they think I was lying yeah. and they wouldn't hire me. So I kept a lot of that information to myself. My dad taught me too much information is worse than not enough. Um, so I will say, uh, <laughs> Hope says, uh, Foster's mic is low. Um, oh, I will thank you, Hope. I, maybe I wasn't close enough to I it. will say thank you, Corn Ferry, because that got you back in the game. Got me back in the game. Right? So, and uh, got you up and running. So that was, man, that was what, 10 years ago then? Mm-hmm. You were 40? Mm-hmm. You were 05. 30, 40? Yeah. 05. <laughs> however, however long 05 was ago. So. Oh, my God. When all that was going on, had you already been part of the Career Search Network or yes. you'd already started it? I had, I had already started when it. When did that come about? That came about in 1996 when we first okay. started the show. Jim Munson and I had that group at, at Irving Bible Church. Irving Bible and Church. And it got okay. pretty popular, too. Yeah. yeah. And there, wasn't there a group? East Dallas, too, a really big group that you, I think you had been involved with? Or East Dallas, East Dallas. East On the east side of, of the Metroplex? Over here, we Richardson had, maybe, or somewhere, there was a, a, a really, really large... There were a number of groups that have existed over the time that we've been in gone. existence, but have come and gone. Okay. Most of the groups disappear because leadership that I was telling you guys about, everybody gets a job. Well, so that means we can't get you a job then. No, I won't get a job. <laughs> I got my job. You guys are my job. You really are. Well, I have a question here on uh, on LinkedIn. So Meg yeah. Rose says, Foster, what's your goal now that you've gone through all of that? What is your mission? Yeah. My mission is to get to know as many people that are in need as I can. Now, here's what I believe. Here's what I know. 
that goes beyond even believing now. God will cross my path with the people that he intends to be crossed the path with. Me, Trevor, Mark, uh, we have the spirit to help. We, You wouldn't believe the things that we do. We would sound like we were bragging on ourselves if we were to tell you some of the things that we have to endure to be able to do what it is that we do. But it's in our spirit, and that's what we we're put here to do. Amen. And God gave us certain gifts that come into play right now, really, and you can't stop that. You can't, You will have to put a bullet in our heads, honestly. Yep. You really will. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely true. You can't stop us. Can't hold me back. No, oh, Lord. No? We believe no. we belong to Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that was my... My mind is just drawn a blank. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. No. Mark is easily the more mature of me and Trevor. You guys. <laughs> well, you know, so, Foster, you have... You know, knowingly or unknowingly, yeah. right? Actively or, or it passively, yeah. been not only an inspiration but a you know just bastion of support and encouragement. And I know that you know out of all those people that you're connected on with LinkedIn, and I know blew my mind. You said you could tell us something about sixty percent of them, seventy percent of them. Yeah, yeah not that's even crazy. Yeah. Um, with that many thousands of connections. So we know, right, that you have had such an impact in the community, such an impact in the career transition market, the career search network. Um, you, you, you probably don't even realize or understand the impact that you've had. Um, so just this small sample of people here that are, you know, listening right now out of the thousands of people, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Of yeah, people through, we do have a big listening audience. Yeah, through yeah. The, well, I mean, think about all the people that have over the last decades come through the Career Search Network mm-hmm. and, and had their lives touched that, right. you know, your impact has just been um, exponential, and God is definitely working through you. Yes. Well, I can tell you guys why I'm, I'm coming. No, no, I'm no, coming. you're good. You're good. I'll tell you guys a main thing about that. God did that. He actually used Foster. Foster ain't nothing special, believe me. I'm from McGregor, Texas. I love my McGregor Bulldogs. Come on now. But God will use you if you let him. You will be surprised. Learn how to let him. I agree with that. You know, uh, I myself, I, I have a lot of um, dreams and visions. Yeah. I'm not even kidding you. Like, it comes yeah. to me at night. Um, the Lord talks to me. Hey, that's I, how it works. So this radio star, show started uh, from a dream that I had. And uh, it, that's how it all originated. I, I remember um, having a dream. And then I remember Pastor Joel. Shout out to Pastor Joel. Yeah, uh, Scribner. We love you. He, he was doing these motivational videos, and in one of them, he was saying, "I want to know what your dreams are. What you know, what is your dream? And uh, I want you to be bold, and I want you to comment and just put it out there. You got to put it. You have to say it. You have to speak it out loud." And uh, so I remember commenting in, telling him, "Hey, I'm gonna do. I want to do this radio show, and I want to use it to to help. And this is my ministry, and this and that." And I told him about it, and he was all over it, and he loved it. And he was actually one of our first guests. Remember he that? He was. We had him, and he remember gave that? us T-shirts. I still wear mine to the gym. Oh, I, I wear mine. I got mine. <laughs> I wear mine. Is Winology a book? Uh, yes. Winology, Winology, yes, it is a book. It is a book. Uh, you can check it out, Pastor Joel Scribner. And uh, he actually branched off of Covenant Church, uh, which is my home church. It's the Oaks Church. It's now, Oaks right? Church, yep. Oaks church. And... Uh, uh, his slogan, I guess, is "It's Oaks Church Growing Great Lives," mm-hmm. and um, but yeah, he's he's a an an entrepreneur. He actually his story is kind of interesting. So he grew up in martial arts, and he was a four time world Taekwondo world champion. champion. He's a bad yeah. dude. Yeah, I mean he he says Did it all the time. That? He says it all the time. He he'll kick butt for Jesus, and uh, so it's just kind of funny. But but he wrote the book winology to talk about the principles of how to win and how to be successful is there's a science to it right? yeah absolutely and uh, but what's funny about it is it's it's actually the bible what he did is he translated the bible and the principles that are in the bible yeah and wrote a book about these principles that apply make you to su- business and pro- apply yeah. to business so it it's kind of everything good. well yeah and, and he says it's like his trojan horse that he can go into sectors of business that normally would not let a pastor in yeah yeah right? he did yeah. and he can go in with this book and he coaches and he trains businesses um like whole foods 
you know, was one of the big companies that he came in and he, and he coached and trained Whole Foods. And, uh, but he was using the word, you know, and, and it's so evident when you read the book, when you go through it. I do it too. You're like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're, they're, I mean, the stuff just works. Let's just Pastor Joel, you just need to train Chick-fil-A because then you don't need a Trojan horse. <laughs> yeah, we had Chick-fil-A on last week, didn't we? That's right. Absolutely. Hey, uh, I know we don't have commercial breaks because we're doing it in our own studio, not at KVGI, but why don't yes. we take another quick break and go to the comments? Yeah, let's go to the comments let's here. Let's see what we got. So, Ebony Lucas, let's go and let, let go and let God. There is something we, that is something we say loosely, but if you honestly let God have control and operate in mm. what God has designed for you, it is all a beautiful thing. Thank you, Ebony, for Ebony that. Ebony Lucas, guys, is one of those people that you need to link in with. If you get a chance to meet Ebony, believe me, you want to do that. I love this comment here. Uh, Tammy Dracopoulos said, when we operate in our gifts, it shows. There's power yeah, there in being our unique self that God created us to be. You know, there's power. Tammy. You know, it's so true. So uh, I'll give you a little more of my, my backstory and stuff like that. So when I was in uh, auto sales, I was very good at it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and, and what I was good at was uh, negotiating and closing and techniques mm-hmm. on how to like close the deal. And I became That's very, very good. for you. Well, I oh, was yeah. very good at Trevor it. Trevor can sell ice to Eskimos. Yeah. Catch up to a lady with white gloves. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, anyways, so, but the problem was, is I didn't like it. I, I had this kind of oh, like. you knew there was something more? Well, I just felt kind of icky about it. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't like. Um, nobody likes to be sold, and no one. Not and and I didn't like selling. Actually, I really didn't. And um, even though I was good at it, I found out I was extremely talented. Yeah, you were at one of the best I've seen. But I didn't enjoy it. It was something that you know I kind of felt like mm, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. You know nobody what I'm talking wants, about? Yeah, nobody wants to be. Sold. Oh, I'm, I'm using yeah. techniques to close people and stuff. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. right? So, anyways, and. Uh, you know, but now that I grew out of that, I grew here, and all of a sudden now I'm finding out there's different talents and gifts that I was given that were lying dormant there that I didn't know were there. And and I think yeah. God, you know, took this as an opportunity to move me out of there and move me here. We live in a world, I think, this is a fosterism. We live in a world where a lot of things are being sold. There's a lot of ideas and things we see on TV that we don't agree with. We think, eh, I'm not so sure I buy that. Well, that's for a reason. Now, here's what I have found that really, really sells is genuineness. Who are you as a person? Do you even care? You're having a conversation with someone. Do you care about what they're talking about? Yes. Do you have any input? And I'm going to hold this book up again. Wait oh, minute. okay. i got to grab it on the bottom so you okay. guys can see. Okay. I really like the idea of this book. Let's get back to being people. We yes. haven't gotten away from it. There are still people that hire you. There are a number of tools that we use in the job search that are technology, but you know what? It's still a person that makes that decision. So, Foster, you just told us that people are the key. Yeah. God works through people. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's going to change. Anyway. Yeah, it wasn't until like I started uh, being myself, uh-huh. right? That's when a lot of doors have opened. Yes, like, they have. When to. you're not authentic and you're not genuine like i was being i was somebody else i was being when i was selling cars i was i was being this polished you know extremely professional what they teach us i was being what they wanted me to be and i was great at it i was crushing it but you know what i felt icky because i wasn't being myself yeah. right i was mm-hmm. not being trevor houston and so now and even when we got into our industry mark i remember in the beginning we had many conversations where I was like, you know, I don't like this approach of, you know, of business. I didn't like the, the approach. And so I was like, you know what, we need to work on different approach to be able to just be ourselves, to be human. Because no one, what's that old saying? No one cares what you know until they know how much you care. You know how much you care. Right? And yeah. we really do. We care for people. But no one cares what you know until they know how much you care, right? I'm going to tell you guys why I appreciate Mark and Trevor, I had all sorts of people from all the companies in the world that were talking to me that do what Mark and Trevor do. But you know what? When we get laid off at the rate that we're getting laid off, you know what? A lot of us have 401ks and things, and we absolutely, a lot of us need to know how to navigate through that, how to, how to invest that money, how so that money just doesn't disappear. We worked all these years to get that money. <laughs> right. Hey, 
These guys, I approve. I do. That's just the way it is. That's why they have allowed me. This whole radio idea was these guys' idea. I, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> so, and so Trevor and I talk a lot. You know, you can see us sometimes going, let me talk, let me talk. But, uh, guys, it is absolute necessary that you know what to do with your money. Okay, I said it. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you, well, Foster. Thank you, Foster. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a necessary. Well, and, it is. And let me just tell you, Foster, I mean, I, I regardless of Frisco Connect and the who you know and everything that we're doing barbecue. and have done. And barbecue. barbecue. And <laughs> regardless of barbecue. Um, you know, I like, I, I, we just, I think I speak for Trevor too. I mean, we just really have enjoyed getting to know you and just have you be part of the family. So. Yeah, I'm a different dude. Yeah. Well, and, and everyone at, I'm going to pull this up real mm-hmm. quick. Everyone at Frisco connect as well there's a family over there guys there I, is a family. i'm like oh my gosh the support and the love and the, and i can't believe there was a day in time when you when you when, was balling what <laughs> what trevor was so scared you guys what? when i was balling oh you're talking about now, the other day. now. when you were opening up man that's that's you're just wrong for that mark <laughs> Come on, be mature, man. A Come lot on, of you be guys mature. probably remember what we're talking about. Be mature, man. Be mature. No, but, but that, that, what I'm saying, I can't believe awesome. that there was a day and time when I was uh, afraid of that group, and now that's there's something in community, right? Like, yeah. like the enemy. I wanted. I want you guys to hear this. The enemy wants to take you away and and seclude you and take you and isolate to be, you. isolate yep. you, and, and so you can be alone, so he can so he can get you. Um, that's just the way it is. So he can get you all alone. But when you have a community, when you have people that can support you and help you, you know, he can't get you. Right. He cannot he can. get you. Guys, we stick together. You go to a meeting, you're going to meet somebody in there that you think is kind of cool. And you know what? It's for a reason. So I'm going to suggest, now, of course, I'm Mr. Network, right? I'm the job father, whatever y'all call me. <laughs> Don't call me some of the other stuff y'all call me. So, <laughs> but you know what? There's a reason for that. And if you feel that way, if you think this Trevor guy is pretty cool, Mark Foster, whoever it is, go over and introduce yourself to those mm-hmm. people. I guarantee you will find out why you have an affinity for that person. Well, I want to give a shout out real quick to Pete Hernandez. Yes. Oh, right? my goodness. Like, Pete. if we're going to talk about. Judge. If we're going to talk Judge about Bugby. Frisco Judge Connect. Uh, right? We need to talk about that because. You know, Frisco Connect is a great group. There's a lot of great people over mm-hmm. there. Uh, Pete Bob Hernandez, Ernst. yeah, Bob Ernst. Especially John Luce. John Luce. Oh, we wouldn't have a right? Frisco Connect. Mm-hmm. Went for we John. are super fortunate to be able to have a place that we can go to and yeah. gather, you know, and all the volunteers. Guys, all the volunteers, thank you so much. We love you guys. Um, it and wouldn't be anything without Pastor you. Pastor Steve Fisher and, uh, and Karen Hawkins, thank you. Mm-hmm. A yes. big shout-out, too, to all of the speakers because, oh, yeah. oh, as far as I'm aware, they come and do that out of the goodness of their heart. They really do. Right? They and do. so, you know, it's not like there's a budget from the church that they have paid speakers come in. Like, guys, <laughs> those all those people that come in and share. Speaking of Pete Hernandez, I see he's online with us. What's up, oh, Pete? Hey, Pete? What's going on, man? <laughs> Pete. Repeat. Didn't even know you were here with us, man. We were just showing you some love up here, man. We love you, man. Appreciate you so much. Um, yeah, let's talk to the audience real you quick. You know, I've got something to say real quick yeah, yeah, about yeah, Frisco for Connect. Guys, yeah, yeah. upcoming, this is coming up Tuesday on the 1st, guys. If you are in technology, you definitely want to be there. Our speaker <laughs> is going to be my long-term buddy, Rick Martinez, who was a much better recruiter than I ever was. Rick owns R2 Technologies. If you are in technology, I would definitely go to R2 Technologies. Look at the website. See what opportunities are there. They service a number of large clients around Dallas-Fort Worth, and you wouldn't, you won't get a better company to work with, honestly. As recruiters, I know Rick. I've been friends with Rick almost my whole career. Rick, you're not as old as me. No, Rick, you're older than me. Anyway, oh. <laughs> Rick is my buddy. But Rick is going to be our speaker, and he's got a new thing that he's noticed that he's going to share with us on Tuesday the 1st. Nice. Hey, Foster, I um, want to hear some more about you two. Uh, again, because I, I, this is some of the stuff we've never heard, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've never true. heard. So yeah. um, when you got started in the Career Search Network and you, you're building and 
you know, you've got Search for You Inc. And I know that you've got, you know, partnered with Chris McCaskill, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Buddy Chris. Hey, Chris, if you're watching. Love you, Chris. I'll see you tonight, bro. Um, Chris is swole, man. Chris is swole. Yeah. So uh, how did you, though, the network is big. I mean, you know, we've named Celtic Focus Group and, you know, Dennis O'Hagan's group uh -huh. and Jeff Morris and all these other groups, the pit crew, like, None of that was there yet, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so yeah. how did you build these relationships? Were these in, in, were these people that you already knew? Did you already knew Dennis and Jeff and, you know, some a of these number, other folks? Or? Yeah, a number of the groups, guys, uh, I created, uh, founded a number of the groups initially. Then we got an idea of, you know what? We're not the only people out there that have started groups. Mm -hmm. So we... I learned about Dennis O'Hagan through South Lake Focus Group. But South Lake is so big, you hear about everybody. So some of these people I need to reach out to, especially Jeff Morris. Mm. Jeff is the creator of CareerDFW.org. You can find everything that's going on uh, in the job search uh, you know, by way of job fairs and meetings. And you want to find a meeting that's somewhat close to your home. Um, and uh, as I saw people across the nation... And I talked to the leaders of these groups across the nation, and I wanted to know what they were doing. And since I had done it for so long, I knew, I gleaned, or what's that word we use in Christianity? It's a Christianese word, uh, discerned. Mm. I discerned whether there was value there. If there is value, guess what? Those people in those areas, no matter where it is in the United States, need to know that that group is there. And the companies that are there hiring, some of them are here in Dallas, and they just got locations up there in other states. They need to know that that group is there so that the recruiters can go and recruit from that group. And the people in the group need to know that those companies are there and those companies are hiring. Who to contact and all that kind of stuff. You, you look like a man of discernment. That's Trevor's word. Discernment. <laughs> oh, discernment. <laughs> I glean a lot of things. Hey, guys, I want to talk to the audience real quick. So um, I would like to see if you guys had any questions for Foster. Oh, right? yeah. Foster's yeah. been doing this kind of thing for a long, long time. Long time. Yeah, let's pick so, Foster's brain. So put your questions in the comments section, and we're going to do a little Q&A section, okay? So if you have a question for Mr. Foster Williams, maybe it's like, hey, do you know somebody at Toyota? Hmm, maybe that's a good question. What what are your questions for Foster? Go ahead and put those in the comments section. It takes about 30 to 45 seconds for him to come back to us, so we'll come back to that in a second. Yeah. Um, but also we want to know what you're looking for too. So hashtag IT, project management, QA, accounting and finance, whatever it is that you're searching for. Uh, I also want to give a couple of plugs here to the Who You Know workshop, right? So yeah. that has been really, really successful. We've helped a ton of people. If you've been to our workshop, give us your comments. I would like to hear um, what you learned, what you have applied, if you've taken action. You know, we always talk about taking action and that rule of 72 hours. So what are some of the uh, takeaways that you have learned from that workshop? What do we do at that workshop, Trevor? Well, we're going to teach you really how to rehumanize your job search process because, you know, Right now, it's so dehumanized. You're dealing with technology. You're dealing with the applicant tracking system in the black hole. But right now, what we are going to do is teach you some technology to uh, help you get out of that black hole, right, to, to make sure that you rehumanize it. It's this service right here. We'll talk more about that. If you're a BombBomb -bomb user, I see Meg Rose there, so I know she uses BombBomb. -bomb. Um, you know, it, it's really just about um, getting face-to-face. -face. If you can have face-to-face -face conversations. I ask people this all the time. If you're able to, to communicate on a daily basis with mm -hmm. recruiters and hiring managers, the decision makers, mm -hmm. the gatekeepers, if you're able to su successfully do that on a daily basis, not once a month when you get an interview or whatever, yeah. on a daily basis, if you can do that on a daily basis, you're going to land. Right? Well. All right, we got a question in here. Erica, uh, how are you doing? Good to good to hear you. What is the last name of Rick? Martinez. Martinez. And Mar Pete, Pete Martinez. answered before you got to it. it. Yeah, Pete said Rick Who was Martinez. that, Erica? Rick Which, which Erica? Martinez. We've got three Erica. Erica uh, Ordonez. Ord Ordonez. I saw you this morning. <laughs> Hi, Erica. We've yeah, got it's a, Martinez. we got another question from Ebony. What way can we pray for you 
in your current journey? What a great question. And that's what Meg Rose asked too. How can I pray for you, Foster? Well, what does Foster need? Guys, uh, I'm used to praying for people. I, it's not, I'm not good at asking for help, but you know what? I do would enjoy you guys praying for me this Saturday. I have to funeralize or be part of funeralizing my absolute best friend that I've had for 50 years of my life, Jonathan Smith, back in McGregor, Texas, who I'm very proud of those McGregor Bulldogs. Jonathan was, he liked the Texas Longhorns as well, and we're both McGregor Bulldogs. And uh, I've got to I gotta go put my best friend in the ground. Man. So God blessed me by my daughter being able to get off from work. But she, mm. she works for Marriott, so that's not easy. <laughs> and so she is going to be with me. That really, really strengthened me because my, my spirit has been challenged this week. Yeah. Some of you guys may have noticed it. Most of you guys probably did not. God strengthens me like that so I can able to get through whatever it is I need to get to to serve you guys. Mm. That's great. Yeah, prayers for you, Foster, and we'll be thinking about you as you're going to do that. Yeah, um, that one's a little difficult. It you is. know, Ernie, has, on a lighter note, asks, what's your favorite barbecue joint? We know you love barbecue. <laughs> we know you love barbecue, but yep. what's your favorite Barbecue joint. My favorite barbecue joint is in Austin, you guys. Hannah Williams, are you listening to me? The, it's, you're the cause of this. So Hannah Franklin? discovered it. No. No. Hannah discovered a place called Style Switch down in Austin. Just It's on Lamar, just short of the airport, you know, as you're going north on Lamar, just short of the airport. Oh, yeah, that's way out there. Style Switch is, oh, my God. Goodness. Let me make a note of and that. there's a number of reasons. Around the Dallas Metroplex, guys, easily it's going to be Pecan Lodge. Now. Pecan Lodge? Yes. Pecan Lodge, you might want to get an extra job before you go to Pecan Lodge. Just like that, style switch? <laughs> style switch. So I have a good uh, uh, point I'd like to make because I have yeah. people all the time. They come to me because they know I'm close to you. Oh, man. Right? Yeah. And they're like, man, you know. I need to talk with Foster because they know you're the job father, right? Oh boy! So I'm easy to get like, to. Like, like, like they know that you can help, right? And so, um, Glad. I get this all the time. So, what what were those two restaurants again? It was Style Switch, Style Switch, and here in Dallas Fort Worth is going to be easily Pecan Lodge downtown. Pecan Lodge, Deep and, uh, <laughs> where I used to party. Never mind, y'all didn't hear that. I remember, I remember standing way in line at Pecan Lodge when it was at the farmers market. When it was in the farmers market, and by the time I got up to the counter, they sold out. All they had was like some burn ends, but it wasn't like the good burn ends. It was oh, like the burn ends, It was like the y'all. bad burn ends. Well, what I'm trying to say here, guys, okay, with the squirrel moment. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, if you're trying to reach this man right here, why not just reach out to him, invite him to Pecan Lodge or whatever that is. I pretty, might go. I'm pretty sure Foster might get out of the house for some, for some ribs go. or something, right? Some, I might go. <laughs> Catch me at the right time. So what's your what's your favorite barbecue, right? Is it ribs? Is it pulled pork? Is it brisket? Can I guess? Oh, 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 no, no, no. Let's make this a trivia question. Range Rattlers? No, 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 no. Hold on. Uh, audience, we want to know, what do you think? How, how well do you know Foster? What yeah. is Foster's... <laughs> Favorite it. barbecue is it? Is it A what, ribs? What, what's the favorite meats? Hold on. Is it A ribs? B brisket. I'm a Texas boy. C, C pulled pork. Pulled pork. Uh, D chicken. Oh man, you barbecue guys chicken. Take that off the list. I, I'm D. just saying. Hey, hold on. This is Foster. This is, look, hey, I'm just saying. I want to hear that in the comment. Do you use the A ribs? B brisket. C pulled pork. Or D, D probably turkey, chicken. smoked turkey. No, you can throw a turkey out. So we talk about meat. This thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, no turkey. <laughs> I want to hear that in the comment section. I want to hear it. Yeah. Right. What do you guys think it is? I already think I know. And see, I, he hasn't he hasn't said it, but I'm I think I know. Say, or ham, smoked ham. Hey, well, and yeah. we gave the so I, I'm going to put my answer right here. Okay. Uh, so we've got them coming in. We've got. Uh, I'm going to say John says John says ribs. Uh, Adriana says ribs. Ebony says brisket. Meg Rose says ribs, then brisket. Jean says brisket. So let's see. This I, is I'm funny, gonna put. Ernie put, says brisket. I'm gonna put my vote in. And I put my vote in. I said ribs. I'm gonna go with <laughs> Egbert's vote is everything. I'm gonna go with Egbert <laughs> wins. We have a winner. I'm going with ribs. What do we think? Yep. What do we What do we think? Of I judge a barbecue restaurant 
by their brisket. Oh, brisket. Ooh, you got brisket. It wrong. You got it wrong. Ernie Vandalese, oh, you, hey, you Gene know what time Ernie. it is, baby. Yep, Gene you, and Ernie got You want to know why I said brisket or yeah. why I said ribs? Because I probably had ribs when we went one time. At Tri Tip, yeah. Tri Tip. Well, mm-hmm. Bro- Brooke Birdsong says if he likes Pecan Lodge, it has to be brisket. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Brooke, you, you know what time it is. <laughs> yep. Did you know that um, uh, Franklin's and uh, Uchi are going to collaborate and they're opening up a restaurant up here in, in Dallas? It's Uchi? A, it's an Asian fusion oh, barbecue. Wow. It's a barbecue oh, wow. slash Asian fusion mm. restaurant. Yeah. Ooh, I like this fusing stuff. It's going to be crazy. It's Yeah, it's, it's a... Um, um, Franklin's Barbecue and Uchi, the sushi. So we got a comment from Ebony Lucas. She says, y'all should do that more often. Fun facts of the three amigos. Okay, Ebony, (laughs) what is a question that you would like to know about one of the three amigos? What what is a question that uh, we can answer for you? She says, booyah. These guys know about money, and I know about spending it. (laughs) (laughs) This is Q&A time, okay? Uh, give us your comments. We want to know. Okay, Gene says, I cheated because I just went out for barbecue with him. Yeah. Uh, okay. Who said that? Who was who That's was Gene. Uh, Gene D. De- for brightest. Yep. Gene is my buddy. Gene is the man in the whole 50 grand, y'all. <laughs> now, Gene is an executive, and you guys will meet him. I will make sure you do that. Gene, we are going to the C Group tomorrow. Hello, Lisa Sutton that runs Senior Executive Alliance. And uh, for a lot of you guys that are senior level executives, uh, you will see me direct you guys to that group and introduce you to as many people as I can there because that is a focus group for seniors. Now, senior executives, you don't have to be senior. Does that mean I can go because I'm an elder? You're an elder. You can go. (laughs) Mark, we got a question for you. Okay, so Meg Rose wants to know, favorite stand-up comedian? Oh. Oh, All right, so let's. I'll tell you. So Scott well, hold Smyre. On. Hold on. <laughs> all right. So we, we're going to give some. Let me give you some choices. Okay. All right? Give some choices. Right, so um, favorite stand-up comedians: Joe Joe Coy. Joe Coy. Okay. Ali Wong. Ali Wong. Ali Wong. Hilarious. Um, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Dave Chappelle. And Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Okay, so there's four. There's four. Guys, don't judge us when it comes to the comedians because comedians, yeah, don't judge us on comedians, comedians are usually kind of a little bit grimy and dirty, but yeah, that's what makes it are. funny. So. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> I know it's a Christian show. We're like, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Dave Chappelle said, I'm going to go kick me off. All those comedians are a little raw, a little dirty. <laughs> all right, so what were those again? Joe, Joe Coy. Joe Coy. Um, Ali Wong. Ali Wong. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. And... Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. All right. Cambridge what did your accomplice? Who did we go put your see? Vote. Put that down there. That's my favorite one. The one that you took me to see at your church. I will say one of my one of my favorite comedians, not my favorite comedian, but one of my favorite comedians who was not on that list is um what's that guy's name from Tennessee? He's the Korean. He's the He's the Korean Korean, Korean commu- uh, comedian, but he talks like um he talks like a country singer. Somebody will know. You, yeah, who? If you right. know that guy's name. We're starting to get some answers in. Hope, our lovely assistant, we love you so much. We she do love says Joe Joy Coy. Joe Joe, Joe Coy. Coy. Oh, that's because she's uh, she's married to a Filipino guy. Oh, Guillermo, <laughs> did we hear that you landed? Guillermo, Guillermo? we heard you land. I heard hey. you landed, Guillermo. How are you, man? Hey. Congratulations, everybody. Give Guillermo some some hands on LinkedIn. Everybody, give give Guillermo some hands on LinkedIn. Guillermo, you see my hand, right man? There, man, congratulations to you, brother. We're so happy for you. I heard that. Where did I hear that? Did somebody tell me that? Yes, I saw it on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, you yeah. got no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So congratulations. Uh, okay, so let's see. Michael Jr. Michael Jr. Who did Tammy say that? Yep, Tammy says Michael. Michael Jr. Jr. is the funniest guy you will ever hear, and he is a Christian comedian. Uh-huh. So, uh, Mark, who who are we who are we going with? Well, here? we only had one guest, so uh, I watched him last night. Sold out, right? Sold out a football stadium. You know who that is? 
sold out the football stadium Mr. in Philadelphia. Lopez. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Yeah. yeah. How do I know? See, I, 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 <laughs> I knew it. Right, Kevin, Kevin Hart. Yeah, okay, man. So, I'm guys, say right. say some prayers for Kevin Hart because I heard that he had um, a, uh, car a car wreck that yeah. Oh, yeah. jammed him up pretty oh, good. Yeah. yeah. He was in like an old school Chevy he's or something. He's okay now, but I'm okay. quite sure he's still recovering. Oh, yeah. So, those prayers will be uh, yeah. well taken. <laughs> oh, Guillermo yeah. says I took a sales director role at a company called I Rely. All right, really? congratulations. <laughs> Pete said no, no Ken Jeong. No hey, Ken I, I do like Dr. Jung. He's uh, he's pretty funny too. What other questions you guys have for us? We would love to. Uh, this is our uh, Q and A section. It can be silly. It can be fun. It can be serious about your job search. Have fun with the three amigos. Yeah, have fun with the three amigos. Pro- Give a us a question. Me here. Yeah, a little. Pro- yeah, you like it's like our cups. We got our Who You Know Cups. Look at, look at. You guys, I'm going to zoom and in guys, on the... share this information, this radio show. Share with as many people as we, you will. We don't have any more, so you have to come on the show and drink out of the, yeah. out of the You Know coffee cup. And Meg Rose water. says she loves Kevin. Kevin Kev. Kevin Kev. Kev Kev. Kevin Hart is probably, I mean... Mr. Lopez about, is my favorite actor. Oh, Lopez. I've seen Oh, him. my God, Lopez. I just yes. love Kevin Hart. But I'm, you know, half of my family really? is from Mexico, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mark, do that again. I'm gonna tell you, I'll put the camera on you. Do it again. Put do it, it again. Do it again, Mark. Do put it again. the camera on me. Really? <laughs> so who does that one? Who Kevin Hart. Hart. Kevin Hart. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Uh, Meg Rose says, "What do you need that you wait? What do you need that you don't need? What do you hmm. need, that Meg Rose? Need? What girl? What? Hmm. What, what, what you, you talking about? Is what you talking about, Willis? What do you need that you don't need? That's more of a riddle. Hmm. <laughs> Meg, that's more of a riddle. Re- I'm re- sorry. Rose, you re- brought, re- me, you brought me what I, you one time you brought me what I need that I don't need. Okay, Joel says, "How do I get a cup? Uh, <laughs> I will pay." <laughs> Joel. Joel, those are some expensive cups, but you got a job, so that's not a big deal. Let me ask y'all: Would would you would the Who You Know Nation like some Who You Know apparel? Swag. Would you like some, some swag? swag? Like, Absolutely. Like T-shirts and cups and fun things like that. That's a good question. We've right? got to help this radio show grow, just like the network did. Oh, so Meg Rose says, Trevor, what do you want that you don't need? Or no, what do you need that you don't want? Oh, what do I need? Or that you want. What do you need? What do I need that I want? That you want? <laughs> well, that makes sense. What do I need that I want? I'll tell you what I need. I'll tell you what I need and what I want. I need my house to get, get back in your back. house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, a few months ago, my house got flooded. For those of you that are following me and you know about my stories, my house got flooded twice, actually. Uh, it all started from a... Um, AC condensation line that ran into the uh, upstairs sink. And after that, I had a water restoration company come out to, to clean up the mess. And they pulled that sink out. And I went to stay in a hotel, me and Holly did. And next thing you know, catastrophe. Like they left the water on and oh, they, man. it opened up in the middle of the night. And so the water was going all night long. So it went from probably like a $15,000 damage to a 100000 plus thousand dollar damage. A hundred? Over a hundred, yeah. Over a hundred now? Mm-hmm. And then they start dancing. Right. Right? Yeah, when you take yeah. into equa- equation the uh, additional living expenses because they're paying for our apartment. Oh, yeah. and, I mean, it's yeah. it's over a hundred grand. And do they start dancing? What's that? Did they did they do the right thing? Did they, oh, uh, they take oh the care? company? No, the company that did the second flood totally uh, said I'm, we're not liable for this, and it just happened, and blah blah blah. And so, so uh, my my insurance company, Earth. Earth. they're going after them. So yeah, yeah. so okay. that's what I need. I actually was just at my house today, um, and and uh, they're scheduling the pack out so the next step is they're going to literally pack out my house and clean everything because everything is still sitting in like soot like all this nasties from the ceiling because the popcorn i had popcorn ceilings and it all just collapsed oh man and water and everything so my house is still just sitting in disarray oh yeah it's just a mess some of you Duran Duran fans, you remember that song? This is Planet Earth. <laughs> that kind of crap happens. Meg Rose says, I love Holly. Awesome. Tell her how much you love Holly. She's amazing. She does great work, and she's passionate about it, so too. So let me ask you yeah, here. she does. In your uh, apartment, do you have a microwave now? 
Yeah. Oh, he's got a microwave. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Trevor has a microwave. Yeah. <laughs> when I first met Trevor, he didn't have a microwave. He oh, had he did. He had new a, wave. a new wave air fryer. New wave oven, baby. Air oven. New wave air oven. Yep. New wave oven because wow. because here's here's why. Can I go back on that okay. story? Because yeah. I'm cheap. Okay. Okay. That's really the, the bottom line. I'm cheap. Let me tell you what happened. Bottom line. Bottom line. I'm cheap. So I, I had a mic uh, a microwave. Okay. <laughs> oh, you had one. And, and my my house is is 20 years old, right? So it was built in '95. It's actually a little older than that, right? So built in '95. And it was the original microwave, and I have home warranty of America, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So my microwave went out, and they paid for me to get a new one. They gave me like over a, a, a grand. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over a thousand dollars for a twenty-year-old microwave because it was the top of the line back in the day, yeah. right? Was it a man? I don't remember. Something. <laughs> I don't remember. Anyway, so I, I got the I got the thousand bucks, and and the problem was is I went shopping for a new microwave. And the dimensions of the newer microwaves versus the ones that were 20 years older, I was going to have to have some carpentry work done. Oh, to and, the cabinet, okay. Yep. And so, because uh, they're built in and all that. And so I was like, well, um, I have a 20 year old oven. And so I didn't want to have this brand new and do carpentry work. And then I'm going to also have to buy the oven. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just wait for the oven to go out. And then I'll, I'll claim it. Houston. I'll claim it on insurance. Like, you know, because if it goes out, I claim it. So I'm like, I'll wait for the, the oven to go out, and I'll get one of those two-in-ones. That was my that was my plan. So I didn't have a microwave for a couple years because that thing never died. <laughs> that oven never died. I can't talk, man. I can't talk. <laughs> wow. There's story, you got stories on me that I, <laughs> that I, I can't disclose. Like, uh... Going outside and seeing my car getting pulled away by a tow truck. <laughs> well, I lost my car when I had one drink at the Cowboy Club. <laughs> That's right. Foster had a drink up at the Cowboys Club, and he got lost. He lost oh his God. car, lost his keys. He lost his mind. Well, <laughs> I got lost. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, man. Guys, we absolutely... Oh, Megro says double oven. Yep, that's right. That's we had a squirrel moment for about 15 minutes, didn't we? We did. Yeah, we, did. we did. So there was a question, Foster, um, though, that somebody had asked about, and I wanted to ask you because uh, it, was a very, it was a very good question. It good was a poignant question. Yes, it was a very good poignant question. Um, Ebony asked a good question. <clears throat> While you're looking yes. for that question, uh, did you find it? I did. Okay. So it was from Tammy, right? Oh, what was a challenge or challenges that you found from a recruiting standpoint, uh-huh. right? As a recruiter, that would be helpful to job seekers. Guys, here's what we got to do. You guys, I'm in the studio, so you can't throw anything at me. <laughs> Every job that we apply for needs to, we need to send a resume that absolutely answers the questions to that job posting. So that means that you guys that are doing the shotgun effect that are shooting your resume out for all of these different jobs, uh, it ain't going to work, y'all. We need to, we have to, because of where we are now, we have to make our resume speak to those recruiters, speak to those hiring managers. Whatever you guys are asking for on this job posting, look, I did it. I did it here. I did it there. And you know what? If you let us know, if you are able to know what the results of you performing those functions are, we want to know that too. That will add value, and we will absolutely not be able to sell your resume to a hiring manager if it is not tailored for that job description. It's you not going to happen, y'all. You know, I got a question um, that was <clears throat> asked to me today, and I didn't know how to answer it. Uh, and I th- they, they said they asked you too, Foster, so maybe maybe Mark knows that. Maybe Mark knows. One, right? um, so... <laughs> The meaning of life. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Python. No. No, so so um Neep. <laughs> What was that, Mark? What did you just do? <laughs> Squirrel. I said, I said Neep. Wow. Come on. Wow, okay. That's from Monty Python, search for the Holy Grail. I I, I don't think I've seen that. <laughs> um awesome. Anyways, so the question was, uh, the person was having some issues with job scan and trying to get it to uh, to work. Did you get that question? I did. Somebody and I've got it. Yeah, I've got and, it. I, and I said, I've never actually used job scan. I can't mm-hmm. say that I've actually used it. I know about it. I know people have you know, said, hey, go use it to match the, the mm-hmm. keywords in the job description with your Ooh, resume yeah. and, and match it up. And they were just having some technical issues on, on like, have you ever used it before, Mark, or no? I have. You have used I it? I have, yeah. 
But uh, I don't know if I what, – what was the question? If it, you were just having some technical issues trying to get it to line up or something like that. And so mm. I, I really – I've got I, a perfect answer for that. Yeah, what, what is that? Guys, here uh, – Ooh, I do too. Go. You yeah, first. Yeah, good. Cause yeah, I'm, you first. It's going to lead into yours. Tammy Dracopoulos, you and I were – well, you and I have a lot of conversations, but this is one. On job scan, guys, a lot of you guys focus on keywords. That's wonderful. If you have a lot of keywords that are adjacent to that job posting, the recruiter will, will, will query those keywords, and they'll see a lot of those keywords on your resume. Here is the thing. I could care less about keywords at that point. I want to see the – what was the word, Tammy, that we, we thought about this morning? It was a perfect word for that. Um, I want to see the relevance of your work skills – to what that job is calling for. The keywords are good to have there, but how have you used those keywords on a job posting? It's got keywords there, but we're looking for someone to use this particular software, that particular software, that methodology or whatever it is. If those keywords are there, I want to see it used in the context that we are looking for. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's what can you do for me? Right, these companies are yeah. wanting to know how you can solve their problem. Does it make sense? A lot of the times, too, though, in the job description, you don't always have um, what they're really looking for. Some of these job descriptions are just kind of canned, um, and you know, there are, a lot of them are very similar. So, uh, Jill Johnson, if you're listening right now, one one of the things I picked up from her was a question in the interview that she says. Uh, can you tell me what's not in the job description that you're really looking for me in the next oh, uh, 30, 30, 60, 90 days like you really want me to get accomplished uh, that's not in the job description? Is yes. there anything there? Yeah, right. And and that really opens up. And I think another question that is super important in your interviews, um, you know, ask the, the hiring manager or that recruiter, what did you see in my resume that brought me in here today? You obviously saw something there that, that was valuable um, what, what was it that you saw in my resume? And one of two things are going to happen. You're either going to find out, did they actually read your resume? Maybe they didn't. That happens. That does happen. Uh, you're also going to find out what, if they did read it, what is it that they saw that they liked? And right. that's where you want to oh, focus. Yeah. You want to focus on that stuff when you're interviewing uh, because that's why they brought you in. That's why they brought mm-hmm. you there. Maybe not all the other fluff. You brought, you put a lot of fluff in there, but there was something yeah, specific. Yeah, we're proud of ourselves. <laughs> yeah, there's something specific that they saw that yeah. they brought you in for. So that's perfect. ask that question. What is it that brought? What, what was it that you saw on my resume that brought me in here today? I think that's it's a good perfect. question. That's absolutely perfect. Yeah. That is the reason that we're there talking. Now, guys, if you're in on an interview, you have your advantage anyway because they've already gleaned from your resume that there's probably something that we need to talk about. So if you guys are asking them that question, that Heather, Heather I wonder why you want to call him Heather, Trevor. <laughs> hey, look, Trevor don't look nothing like no girl. You know, I know this is 2019, but we don't get down like that. Okay, so that is the reason wow. that we're in there. Wow, really? Wow. That's the reason that we're in there talking. And... Um, that's the one thing that you can focus on because that's the that's the bobblehead effect there. That's the one <laughs> thing that will get their attention because you know what? That is re- we really need to be talking about. Here's another question, guys. On the phone interview, if you're blessed enough to have that, ask that company, is this particular position open because of growth? You know, when we talk to all these companies, everybody's growing at an exponential rate, right? Is that company, is that position available because of growth or was someone in this position before me? Now, mm. you know, they won't, they may not go into the exact reason as to why that position is open. If there was a person there before, you can cover that as best you can in the interview. Don't listen at that point. Don't listen to what they say. Listen to how they say it. Well, that's a good one. Uh, we've got another good question here from Joelle. She says, how do you provide value and differentiation? I don't know if I said that right. Differentiation? Yeah, Dif- that's right. Is that how, Am I saying it right? Uh-huh. It just sounds kind of weird. It does. Different- differentiation. differentiation. That's a long word. Joelle, you're smart, and we <laughs> knew it when we had you. And I knew you were going to throw these big old words at us. We don't know, but here's the here's an answer. Guys, when we're talking to people, what we're talking about right now is the exact answer to that question. Your differentiation will be your experience in the very area that that company is needing help. 
Y'all waiting for me to say something else, wasn't you? <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, guys. So here's what we want to do. Uh, I see we've got around 100 people online with us. So go ahead and put in the comments. Uh, we always like to see where you're tuning in from. So put the city that you're turning in from. Uh, if you're here in the DFW area, we'd love to see where you're tuning in from. If you're not, if you're from out of state, rep your city, rep your hood. We want to know where you're coming from. We want to know it. And uh, we want to see this thing have massive impact and massive reach. Uh, hopefully, you know, not just here locally, but really across the Especially nation. Especially you guys. We've got in um, in La Brea, California, there are a contingent of people that are listening right now. I know because you guys told me that you were going to do it last night. So chime in and let us know that you're there if you are there. Yeah, absolutely. Check in with us. Uh, and then also we want to see what you're searching for. That's super important. We have, um, you know, thousands of recruiters, actually. Yes, we do. I get the analytics after every show. And it's funny, um, you know, we have a live audience, but the thing still lives and breathes after this post is live. So yes, yes, um, yes. with the help of you, uh, with your shares and your comments and your likes, it starts to go viral. So these posts, they go, they go very, very far with your help, right? You can help us by just hitting that share button. And we have the analytics and we get thousands of recruiters that listen in on these shows all the time. So we want to know what it is that you're looking for. Hashtag IT, hashtag project management, QA, what it is that you're looking for. Drive those recruiters to you guys' profiles. Yep. Now, here's why we say what we say, and I have not shared this with Mark and Trevor, but after today I'm busted. Okay, uh -oh. guys, myself, Rex Sowett, John LaMonica, Gail Houston, a number of folks that are prominent recruiters and prominent people in their in their HR careers paths we created back in 2000 the DFW TRN which was DFW Technical Recruiter Network it grew to the DFW Recruiter Network now we meet every first Wednesday of every month and a lot of the things that I bring to you guys are things that I heard recruiters talking about in that particular group. Uh, there's hundreds of recruiters, and a number of those recruiters listen to this radio show because I tell them to. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> my job changed. I was on the hiring side. I was on the corporate side. Now I am on the job seeker side. So my focus is the, 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 the things that we have to be concerned about as job seekers. I think it's best if we understand what we're up against and the thought processes on the other side of the fence, I think will help us. It will add value that Joel Fry just asked us a question about. It will add value to our job search so we can find the right opportunity and not just another job. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so we've got comments pouring in now. So let's scroll back here. Uh, let's see. We've got a, wow, can't believe this audience okay. is so great. So, okay, uh, Joel is tuning in from Arlington. Brooke, how are you doing? Rowlett. John from Allen, Texas. Very good. Appreciate you. I was actually, uh, grew up in Allen. Uh, Mike. Yep, Mike McKinney. I was born in McKinney. Uh, oh, wow. Ernie uh, Lampasas? China, well, you skipped China, Haley. Oh. Lampasas, Plano. absolutely. Yep, Ernie Lampasas, Joel is Arlington. You wrote for that. Penny is in Saxe. Hey, Penny. Yeah. Uh, Penny. Egbert, Oak City, right? Oklahoma. Yeah, Tammy uh, from Keller. Was that Penny uh, Spray? Edwin, yeah. White Settlement. Uh, Ebony Lucas, Little Elm. Robert right. Novak, Ennis. Carmilla, and then Jonah. You guys Walker. in La Brea, California, are you there? <laughs> and John is looking for hashtag IT. Brooke is looking for human resources. Egbert, executive operations strategy. There you go. Right? And Gene says Rex is awesome. Yes, he is. Rex is. Uh, Rex is probably the premier uh, brain in job search. And Ernie says, I'm looking for an investigations manager or security manager director role. Hey, Ernie, um, tell me again your uh, your son's name. We were talking earlier today. What was his name? Uh, I know you wanted me to connect with him, so I'm going to make sure to reach out and connect with him as well. Absolutely. Uh, remind me his name. Um, guys, we absolutely love you. Um, <clears throat> we yeah. are here for you. If you need anything, even if it's just uh, an ear or a hug, you know, if you need somebody barbecue. to talk to, barbecue, 
we're here because I, I you know I had somebody the other day at our workshop you know and this happens a lot but um, you know he was going through a rough time going through that a rough time that is common and uh, you know I reached out and just gave him a big old hug and, and it's just it's sometimes you need that so if you need some emotional support um, that's what we're here for guys mm-hmm. that is probably mm-hmm. we offer more emotional support and encouragement than anything else in this network yeah here, here's some notes that I want to put out there too because um, we were at the DFW technology prayer breakfast yes, last week yes that was and, awesome uh, you know they talked about the Roman soldiers and how you know the civilians or citizens had to carry the packs right for yeah. the Roman soldiers and they were required to carry the, the pack for a mile and Jesus talked about going the extra mile. And so it's all about giving back. And, and that's why we do this. That's why the show is here. But I want to be, you know, mindful. And I have to remind myself this all the time. But a reminder for the listener or viewer audience as well, that there is always somebody who has it worse. Yeah. Right? There's always somebody who has, oh, yeah. or maybe put, put it this way, there's always somebody with a greater need than us than our own selves individually so find a way to be able to to reach out and help somebody and again it it may be that you you're not aware of who you're helping look it may be an encouraging word it's the little things it's always the it's the little things that that go the extra mile that's that extra mile Mm -hmm. um it's that hug that 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 support where you can look into somebody and tell them yes you can you got this i you know it's not bigger than than the man upstairs, you know what I'm saying? Um, We got you, you know what I mean? Like, encouragement, lift other people up. And I promise you, if you're having a bad day, go out of your way to help somebody else. And I promise you. Here's something I would like our audience. You're still with us right now, so here I'm going to do a test. Do it. Okay, here's a test. And I would like to hear uh, who actually does this. Um, I want you to look in your phone. And look at your, your, your mom, your dad, your brother, your spouse, whoever it is that comes to mind first that is like top of that list, okay? And I want you to reach out and pull out your phone and text them ah. and say, how can I be a better husband, a better brother, a better cousin? I don't friend. care, a better friend. How, how can I be a better spouse to you? Send that text me and then hit that send button. I want you to do that and watch the type of response that comes back. You may get somebody saying, who is this? (laughs) (laughs) Did you hijack their phone? Yeah, that's a B minus. But I want you to just do that. Watch what happens. Like, I I say that if you're having a bad day, like, go out of your way to try and make an impact in someone else that you love. And do the people that that you love and cherish the most, they're going to give you the honest, raw feedback that you need. They're going to give you the real deal, holy field. You need that right now. Yeah, I do. You need it. Here's a Tammy Dracopoulos. The other day, Tammy says, I read something, and I've heard it many, many times. She said, you will reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, what are you sowing? Mm. Thank you, Tammy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guys, uh, I want to know real quick before we leave this uh, this live stream, because we're about to get off here today. I want to know how many of you are going to do that. I want to see the commitment that you're going to reach out to the people that you love. That is a good idea. Okay, I want I want to see it right That's now. In the comments section, I want you to put hashtag commitment, right, that you are committed to send in that message that I just said to your your wife, your brother, your uncle, your friend, whoever it is that you value the most in your life, um, send that message to them, right? And, yep. and watch. And then I want to hear on the next show, I want to hear those responses. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Guys, that is oh, our yeah. show. Yeah. And it's all, all about, about who you know. Bye bye. Bye. Hook them horns this weekend. Bye. <laughs> Wait, before we actually go, I want to see the comments come in. No? No? We good? We good? Uh, Y'all want to go? Nothing's coming. 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 Nothing's co